recording. Cool. So I'm Jonathan, I'm one of the consultants here at the List Hospital. I'm just going to go through um, a simple machine check. So we're going to check just this Boyle's machine, which is a Dytex and a Steamer 5, and also this Bain circuit that's attached to it, um, and do a two bag test and just the basics and safety. So we're not going to cover monitoring. Um, and this is just uh, to help our um, junior trainees as they go through the IEC. The first thing we're going to do is we're just going to go through the machine check uh, without talking without stopping and just going through all the different elements and then we'll stop and then I'll do a second version where I actually talk through each and every step and what I'm looking for and what I need to consider as a pass or a fail. Okay, so.
So that completes the machine check in the sort of the standard setup. So what briefly I did was start with the supplies, worked into actually checking the, the mixing components of the machine, confirmed all the volatile um, uh, vaporizer working well, checked the oxygen flush, back supplies, AGSS, suction, and then went through the circuit. And I'm going to do the same thing again, but just talking through what I'm looking for each and every different stage of the way. So coming first of all to the supplies, I checked the walls first. So this, uh, at this center here, we don't have nitrous piped in, so we just have oxygen, air, vacuum, and AGSS. Three of these are with Schrader valves, and the AGSS is screwed on. So the first thing I'm just gonna do is check to make sure that they're connected and secure. And then just track them back to the machine and make sure they are actually connected. This is an additional oxygen supply coming from the machine that's powering our pen on ventilator, which we're not gonna do as part of the machine check. So just checking all those so they're secure in place and I'm just going to come around to the front and check the pressures which we want to be 4 bar. So 4 bar for oxygen, there's no nitrous supply and 4 bar for the air which is what we expect as well. Now we're going to go around and check the cylinders. As part of the previous check I turned them all on. Just to be aware when you turn on a cylinder that's fully off. You only just need a quarter turn and a little bit more so you don't have to unscrew it all the way. So ensure that all of them are switched on. So nitrous that's now off. So just a quarter turn and a little bit more. Uh, same, all the way off, quarter turn and a little bit more. And then for safety, I return the key back to the oxygen cylinder and just leave it there. Come around and check the supplies. 137 is what we're expecting for air and oxygen, which is roughly right, and about 47, although 50 is close enough for the nitrous. Nitrous is always lower than the air and the oxygen when it comes to the cylinders, but it's the same when you have pipe supply. So just bear that in mind. So I'm happy now that all the supplies are appropriate. I'm now gonna to start to move to the machine itself. Um, sorry, before that, one of the things I checked around the back on this machine, because it's a medical device, it should need to be checked by your electro biochemical uh, medical engineering department. And this was checked on the 19th of March, 2020, and it's an annual check. So this is well within date. <laughs> right, checking the mixing first of all. So this is uh, the rotamata section. I'm gonna start with oxygen. So what I'm gonna do is just check the flush, sorry. Make sure that flush is working. Make sure it is. So come to the option, turn it on. I want it to go all the way up to the top, so we've got full range of motion. Disconnect the circuit. All the way down, and at about seven or so liters from minute, I'm just gonna occlude the common gas outlet. I want to hear the pressure relief valve within the machine go. That will go when the max pressure hits uh, 138 uh, kilopascals. So we'll hear it and see the bobbin drop as well. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to test the nitrous, so move all the way up and all the way down so it goes to the full flow. I'm going to test the two stages to the hypoxic guard. This stops the machine delivering a mixture that contains pure nitrous. So the first thing is turn the nitrous on. As I turn it on, it should bring oxygen up with it, which it does. And as I turn the oxygen off, it'll bring the nitrous down as well. So that's a two stage to the guard. So we'll bring it up. Again, we'll include the common gas outlets. Off. There's no leak in these two systems. Next one works to the air, move to the air, sorry. Turn the air up, goes to the full range of motion, come all the way down and occlude. Air is so the rotameter section is now functioning properly. I'm going to move over on to um, the vaporizers, of which there's isoflurane and sevoflurane. I do some of the checks without any gas moving through so that we don't end up with anesthetic gases coming out of the common gas outlet. So the first thing we'll do is check that they're seated properly. So you feel around the back, you can see these two little catches there, that they should be running in line with the, with the um, vaporizers and just check that they're secure and seated and that they're full. So there's adequate isoflurane and adequate sevoflurane. I'm now just gonna test here? the interlock mechanism. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the isoflurane, make sure it goes through all the way through its motion, and make sure I can't turn on the sevoflurane, so the interlock is working. And do the same on the other sides. Good. So I'm happy that the interlock is working, that the, uh, the vaporizer is adequately full. And now what I'm going to do is make sure there isn't a leak on each of them. So I'm going to turn on the isoflurane, turn on some pure oxygen, and then go, pressure release valve is gone there. And do the same on the other side. 
turn it on. A little bit clearer. Yeah. Turn it on. Come up. And air pulls. So I'm happy now that the machine is working. This whole section is working fine. We've already tested the flush. We're going to reconnect the circuit. We'll come back to that in a second and we'll just check the ancillary. So the AGSS, the anesthetic gas scavenging system, is active. So just trace the pipe around. It's plugged into the top here. And this red bobbin is floating, which, as you can see on the front, is working. And that, that is connected up via its relief valve at the top here to the circuit. So I'm happy that the scavenging is working. Come around to the sides. I want to check that the vacuum is working, so make sure that it's connected that the vacuum suction goes from a Yanko sucker into an empty canister before going up into the actual suction itself. First thing I'm gonna do is turn it on maximum flow and occlude the piping, and I want to see it reach about minus 500 millimeters of mercury within about four seconds. So here we go, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. That's test one. After I complete this, there's a second test where I occlude it with my thumb, put it onto maximum flow, wait for the pressure to build, and that should hold against gravity, which it does. So thank you, it's good. The last things I'm just gonna check are my backups. So the first is I have got two bag mask valve systems, one for a child with an appropriate mask inside, one for an adult with an appropriate mask inside, and then I have a backup source of oxygen in the form of a CD cylinder, which is here at the back here, which should have a Schrader valve and a pin with a rotality delivery system, and it should be full. So this is only half full, so that would fail. Last thing we're gonna do is check the circuit itself. So this is a Bain circuit, so it's a coaxial maybe some D. So the first thing we're gonna do is just visually inspect it, make sure it's got an appropriately sized bag on the end, so this is a two liter bag, so you can for an adult I've got access to the APL valve. I'm just going to have a look at the outside of it. Make sure there's no obvious cracks, defects. That right, looks fine. And now I'm going to do a positive uh, pressure occlusion test. So what I'm going to do is screw the APL valve down, fill from the oxygen flush, so the bag from the pressure. I'm just going to leave it. So there's no oxygen flow going apart from the minimal minimum amount from the machine. And I want to ensure that there's no leak. Add a little additional pressure. So I'm happy that the pressure outer integrity of this circuit is working. The next thing we want to do is test the inner circuit. So the fresh gas flow in this maybe indeed comes around this inner dark green tubing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a jet of oxygen out through the end of the flush that's going to entrain air with it and should make this bag collapse down. Which it does. So I'm happy that this circuit is working well. So the machine has passed. The exterior ancillaries are working well. The emergency oxygen supply is working and we have an emergency method of oxygenating and ventilating our patient. And the last thing that we're going to do is the two bag tests, which should in theory be done between any, uh, each and every case. The idea behind the two bag test is that it's the last test that you perform to ensure that there's not been any defects in your circuit um, between uh, disconnecting and reconnecting patients. And this follows from the history of the world we call the Broomfield incident where um, two children died because they were unable to be ventilated because the tip of um, an intravenous uh, delivery set got caught in the end of this uh, angle piece here and so it wedged shut so they were unable to back. So what we want to just make sure is that the last thing we do is that, that there is a definitive uh, circuit that easily allows air to pass both in for inspiration and for expiration. So what we do is usually I screw the air valve about, about half closed Fill the circuit again for the oxygen flush. And I place one hand on each bag. And I just basically ventilate between each other. Just bring the valve a little bit tighter. And that just lets me know that there's a definitive connection between the two. But when I generate pressure in both directions, there's nothing that could act as a valve or crew flow. With the two bag test complete, I can disconnect this, open up the APL valve. Connecting mask and we're ready to go. So this machine would otherwise have passed. The only particular faults of note um, was the fact that the emergency CD cylinder was a little bit too low than we wanted for. And then 
that's it. And that's how I do a simple machine check.